Okay, welcome to the, uh, the Meat Goat Boot Camp, and uh, the topic we're going to cover right now is called kidding. Uh, kidding is the uh, uh, probably the most exciting time for goat producers, and so we're going to talk a little a bit about uh, uh, the act of the birthing process itself. It's the culmination of the whole breeding season. Uh, what every farmer's been looking forward to is seeing those uh, kids hit the ground and and uh, start nursing and, and uh, jumping around in the pasture. So the primary, it's this is the primary source of, of any income you're going to receive as a goat producer. So the kidding season is uh, not only exciting, but it's also uh, one of the times of the year where you, you want to probably uh, uh, spend the most time, most management on. And so we'll we'll go through some of the issues that can happen during kidding season. Uh, the management factors to consider are to whether those uh, does should be dewormed at any point. Uh, we've talked about body condition scoring, and so if they get thin, you know, one of the then one of the reasons they may have gotten thin is that they have worms. And so, can I use certain dewormers uh, as a pregnant? as a, a doe is pregnant and there are some products out there that are not labeled to use on does when they're pregnant so you always have to be careful uh, other management considerations are uh, when and where you know are we pat are we having uh, the kids uh, hit the ground in the normal pasture or do we have a barn to put them in are we uh, talking about early spring are we talking about summer um, those are usually the, the two most um, common times that kids do uh, arrive on, on schedule to the farm. And then once uh, they do hit the ground, we want to make sure that they uh, do receive adequate nutrition. And their main source of nutrition is from the dough itself. And uh, they get that from colostrum. And we want to make sure that those kids get up and nurse within about the first 12 hours. Other management considerations that you want to think about in kidding is then when do I want to wean those and sell those uh, kids off at a later date. So the kidding process has a lot of thought process into it. And again, uh, the final thing we'll talk about in this section is a refresher on those body condition scores. All right, so let's talk about deworming. Um, you have to make the decision, do I, do I deworm all my does on a routinely basis, like say every month? Uh, or do we use some other system, which is the one that we typically promote, which is called the FAMACHA system, where we look at the eyelids on those does or animals, and if they become very uh, light-colored, uh, that, that is the time that we use to, uh, to deworm. And so we're not deworming all the does in the herd. Some of them may not need it. And so it, it's, it's best to not uh, utilize a product when you don't need to because we end up getting uh, resistance to dewormers, and that's not a good thing. Uh, when you do decide that you do have to deworm, we want to make sure that that product is labeled for goats, and we also want to make sure that uh, we don't use a product that's not very effective. And uh, we do know that uh, uh, goats have, have had a tendency to become resistant some, to some, some products, and so we look for, for products in a rotation and use a product for as long as we can and then uh, rotate to something different. Some dewormers actually offer direct and indirect protection for the, the unborn kids and so we want to make sure that we think about those products not only is it safe to use but will it actually help the kids when they're born. And then also um, uh, anytime we use dewormers uh, we want to be concerned about any changes that could happen to that doe in late gestation and anytime we uh, change feed uh, we can run into the risk of, of pregnancy toxemia and deworming could be one of those things that causes those does to go off feed and uh, cause hormonal changes like insulin and, and, and cause other issues. Okay, so getting into the, the topic of when and where, uh, again I mentioned the, the fact that maybe we're actually having the kids born out in the pasture themselves and so uh, a lot of emphasis is on the, the doe itself being able to raise that kid by herself, uh, getting it up, uh, getting it dry, and uh, allowing that, that kid to nurse. And uh, if, we, if we actually kid in a barn, then we want to make sure that we've got pen space for all those does to come in and uh, maybe for the first few days of their life uh, spend time in there. We actually have some does that will not accept multiple birth uh, kids. 
And so sometimes you have to graft an animal onto another one and uh, kind of allow those does to accept a newborn that may not have been the one that they actually birthed in, in themselves. And so we have to have kidding pans, and in this uh, situation, uh, you may actually have to lock the doe up where she can't kick that uh, kid away from, from uh, the nourishment that it's trying to get. And so uh, some of your facilities may become more elaborate than, than what you're willing to utilize. So let's talk about the kidding process itself. We have to know what is normal, and what we look for when a, uh, a doe is getting ready to have her babies is to look for those front feet first uh, and the head is between those two front feet in an upright position and we hope in, in goats and sheep that one, only one of them is coming at a time. So you may see two feet but are they from the same kid? And so anytime you look at uh, intervening you want to make sure that uh, there's only uh, one pair of feet and a head that's uh, coming out normally. And uh, once we see that happening, uh, that, that doe usually lays down and, and begins the birthing process and uh, depending on the age of the doe, this can take uh, a few minutes, 30 minutes to as long as a few hours, but we want to see progress being made. If no progress is being made, then we know that something is, is uh, wrong and, and we may have to intervene. But once that uh, kid starts coming out, it'll come out pretty fast and uh, you know, she'll, she'll typically have one kid at a time, uh, get that kid on the ground, uh, lick it, uh, get it dried off, and then typically have multiple births and the same procedure goes um, as the first one did. And if, if we're going in to intervene, we want to make sure that uh, we're helping dry that kid off, make sure that it's breathing, and one of the best methods to make sure any offspring that's been born is maybe take a piece of straw and put it in their nostril and make them kind of sneeze and that helps get that fluid out of the lungs. And, and the ultimate goal is then once that kid is, is breathing all right is to actually uh, receive some colostrum from the mother. That colostrum has antibodies and immunoglobulins in it that will uh, give that baby protection for, for several weeks and uh, it's, it's very important that those kids receive that colostrum within the first 12 hours, if not the first six hours of life. So the process of kidding can also go wrong, and one of the things that we're looking at uh, is maybe backward positions or a head back, uh, front leg folded under, uh, breech backwards. Uh, it can be any number of, a thing, a number of things that can happen and uh, we just need to know what to look for. A, a kid that has its back feet coming forward can still be delivered in a, in a normal delivery method. It's just that once that process starts, that kid needs to come out very quickly because uh, once that umbilical cord gets severed, uh, it needs to breathe pretty quickly. And uh, so it's just a little bit of a, a different uh, presentation, but it can be delivered normally in that situation. Once those kids do hit the ground, uh, our number one goal is to make sure that they get uh, colostrum. And uh, you know what happens if, if a doe uh, does not accept one? Uh, that's where we go into tubing and maybe using alternative uh, colostrum uh, options. And that may be stuff that you've frozen and uh, then you thaw it out in a water bath to make sure that uh, we don't ruin any of the proteins that are in the frozen colostrum. But we want to get that in the first uh, 12 hours of life. Uh, that way they, they have a good start uh, as far as an immunity for the rest of their life. Anytime uh, we, we talk about a newborn, uh, the, uh, the things that uh, we're, we're worried about is, is overeating as well. And it may be a good time to, to think about enterotoxemia um, we can give um, overeating shots pretty quickly, uh, but we want to make sure that um, uh, the vac vaccinations before kidding happens, uh, about two to four weeks before the kidding process had started. That way there's some uh, passive immunity being passed on to the, the kids themselves from the vaccination process. All right, maybe switching gears is now we've, we've got these kids on the ground. Uh, the next question might be, when should we wean these kids? And uh, 
there, there's a lot of differences in the, the real, real answers is, is, is it depends on your management practices and your goals. Uh, could be uh, drought situations where you actually have to wean a little bit early. Uh, but typically, um, most goat operations wean between 90 and 120 days of age. And we'd pick a date, and uh, uh, the age of those kids may, may range from 60 days to 120, but uh, you just pick one day and you wean the group, and then uh, um, you try to, to l remove as much stress as you can from that process. But it is stressful. And uh, you have to be on the lookout for signs of, of basically a change in the diet, which can cause coccidia. And once that happens, uh, we can have some dehydration and uh, poor performance at a bare minimum. But even in the most severe cases with coccidia, you could have some death at that weaning time. Body condition score, just to, to refresh your memory on body condition score, it's a, it's a measure of fatness. It's a method de of determining uh, condition in those does. So uh, we've weaned those, those kids. Uh, it's a good time to do body condition scoring again. And the reason we do that is to allow those does to come back into uh, reproductive efficiency. If, if they're in good shape, they're going to be uh, cycling and uh, be receptive to the bucks when we turn them back in in the fall. Uh, it's also been shown that uh, those that are in good body condition score will increase their fertility, meaning that you'll have higher uh, twinning rates. And uh, if, we, if we get those that are too thin, we, we, we start to see uh, low weaning weights because once those kids are born, they're, they're usually not very strong and they don't survive as well. And this just shows a uh, graph that, um, that shows the uh, percentage of kidding and abortions, uh, showing that the number of abortions uh, goes down if, if a doe is in good condition in that three to four range. Uh, the highest percentage of uh, abortions occurs when uh, those does are a bit less than a two and closer to a one. And it also shows that uh, the number of kids that are born increases as that body condition score increases.